So we are joined today by Jamie Robson, the actor who appeared in uh, Blue Christmas, which was the film that won the Best Scottish Short Film Award at the Edinburgh Short Film Festival. So thanks for coming in to talk to us, Jamie. My pleasure. Uh, we're really here to talk a little bit about acting and so on, um, but just a little bit about your, your, the year that you had. It's been quite a, quite a big year for you. Yes. And um, there was the BAFTA award-winning uh, My Loneliness is Killing Me. Yes. Obviously Blue Christmas, which yes. appeared at Sundance and uh, has also gone on to win an award in London, I believe. Yes, and it also screened uh, a premiere at Toronto mm -hmm. at TIFF and then went on to be in the competition at Sundance and Rain Dance and London Short Film Festival. Also um, Claremont Ferrand, which is uh, Oh yeah, quite mm -hmm. a well-known yeah, short yeah, festival. Yeah. Yeah. So you've also uh, have you finished? You were in Spin State, which is yes. your first feature film. Yes. So that's completed now, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's okay. well into post-production. It's likely to hit the festival circuit around spring. Okay. So. so how did you find you know moving from acting a short film to acting in a feature, and how did that? How did, how was that different? Uh, the scale, obviously, the the, the 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 budget allowed for better locations and facilities. And having to sort of digest a feature length script um, was uh, more of a challenge and sort of understand each section or act while maintaining the through line. Um, and the, the nice thing about shooting a feature is that you're in it for longer. So you've got more time to settle into the character, to develop a relationship with cast and crew and to explore and even experiment and really tangibly feel and demonstrate the, the, the journey that the character goes through, you know, from sort of um, identity to essence. You know. So do you think in, in a feature it's maybe easier to adjust your performance as you're making it? Yes, and you know, time, yeah. And you sort of add little bits of extra into the, yeah, the character. Yeah, I just think that you have, I mean, especially if you have a relationship like I do with Rossi Wilson, the director, we're very close, very collaborative. So at night we'd often maybe look at rushes or discuss the day of shooting, plan the day ahead and make tiny adjustments to the character or, or, or to, you know, so it was a, it's, yeah, it's the negative or, or the difference with features is that it's a huge wheel. It's, it's a much bigger wheel. So w with shorts, I could have been shooting one a month mm. and maybe see it, you know, three months later. But we shot Spin State a year ago and it's maybe going to hit the festival circuit this spring. Mm. And, you know, a project with Charlotte uh, Wells that we'll discuss later, maybe we've been t discussing for two years. A project with Mark Cousins I've been discussing for two years, so it's a much bigger wheel, mm. you know, with features. Yeah, there's a little long, longer uh, lead yeah. in and so on. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of, um, you know, the actual year that you've had, it's been quite successful. Um, Spin State coming out, um, you're obviously looking forward to that. Can you tell us a little bit about the film and, and, and yeah, the background? Yeah, so uh, the script <coughs> came in and I was blown away immediately. Um, often... Uh, scripts come in and there's things that you don't understand or you'd like to inquire or you'd like to maybe suggest tweaks before comf you know committing but this script was just um it was incredible and it was very very well written ross wilson he's a, a writer director he's really an auteur in a sense because he has such a almost obsessive control you know he he, he would like he likes to kind of co-produce to to edit to grade uh, he's very involved in, in sound design and things like that. He's really um, very much in control. And the script came in and uh, we had a chat on the phone. I, well, I actually fo called, I pulled into a lay-by when he, when he rang me and we spoke for three hours. <laughs> and the next day he came up uh, on the train and we went actually to see a Caravaggio exhibition because we both believe in looking at other art forms to get ideas for cinema. So for lighting and composition, looking at classical art, maybe sculpture, poetry and prose for dialogue and so on. So, so what is it um, that attracts you to scripts? I mean, is there a particular type of script that you... Uh, that you a good one? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're at the mercy of the material. I mean, on stage or screen, yes, you can play or tweak with the material often, but you can't change it. Even if the director said you could, you know, you could improvise, it might then offset that scene with the previous or the next scene. It starts to break it up. So you really are at the mercy of the material. And um, for me, uh, it's about treating the audience with respect. And I think uh, sometimes the work is uh, a bit on the nose. When you, when you read some scripts, the emotion is a bit on the nose or it tricks the actor into playing the emotion. So you end up putting a horse costume on a horse. Mm -hmm. And when you read a sophisticated script where there's amb ambiguity, there's paradox, and there's space for the audience to sort of do the final edit. 
mm. that interests me. I think that's more sophisticated. So that's that's the kind of the kind of script you're looking for is really something that subtle and sophisticated yeah. and mm -hmm. space for everyone to take something from. If it's too fixed, if it's too coloured in right to the edges and very sort of blocky, there's not much anyone can do apart from watch it, and that's a very kind of passive role for everyone, even the actors or the audience. You know. So I was reading uh, that you you moved down to London. Uh, um, I'm based in a lot more. Mm. I was fifty fifty and now I'm a lot more. Pretty, I would say 70-30s, yeah, 70-30 at least. So. Do you find that was a big advantage? I mean, No, not at all. <laughs> the way I uh, work, I'm not really looking for work or applying for work or maybe what's known as a kind of jobbing uh, per uh, performer. I tend to pick my work very carefully, not because I'm famous, not because I have some financial security, I have the opposite, you know, I you know, live very humbly, but in doing so it allows me to say no because I, I think it's important that you pick your canvas carefully um, because you, if the work, if the material is bad, then there's nothing you can do and suddenly you're, you're stuck, you're committed legally uh, to a project that is not going to be satisfying or, or enjoyable or could be detrimental to your, to your reputation. Uh, and it's a, very, it's a very intimate thing to work on a feature film, you know, with the director, the writer, the cast, the crew. So, I prefer to pick my work carefully, and that has done me very well in shorts, in stage, in shorts, and now in features. I turned down two features before taking Spin State, and um, I'm very proud of Spin State. And uh, I so moving to London really hasn't cha hasn't changed anything. Do you think? I mean, for other actors out there that might be considering doing that, do you think that what are the they might obviously the advantages are fairly obvious, yeah. but what about the drawbacks? Do you think? I mean, You're in a bigger pond, so there's more competition. Uh, yeah, you have. It's harder to stand out and gain attention from casting directors or producers or writer directors. Um, it's more expensive to live. Um, uh, I don't really consider myself part of the Scottish scene. I never really did. Um, I think of myself much more as just a, an international or actor or at least European. I haven't worked in the States really, but I've worked with French directors, Turkish filmmakers. I'm a big fan of Turkish cinema, particularly in the 80s. So, yeah, I mean, London, for me, was just circumstantial. I, have lot, I know lots of people down there, my agent's down there. I am down there a lot for meetings, but it's, I didn't go down there to try and find new work. And if, if, if another actor thinks of doing that, fine, but it isn't a cheap place to live and it's there's a lot of competition. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, so now you've got some plans coming up uh, for projects coming up. Um, well, there's a few features in development uh, or tipping into pre-production. Some have um, uh, partial funding. The first one that's most likely to be shot is Things They Tell Us, which is a debut feature by Peter Marsden. Now, Peter Marsden actually used to be based at Summer Hall in the Lucky Me studio. He's an award-winning music video director. He's worked with Vice, Days, Nowness, Apple, and he did his debut short uh, two years ago, 2016, called Not Required Back. And we used some incredible footage of that oil rig. Remember the oil rig that washed up? Oh, yeah. 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 So we ha it, we re it reminded us of the end of um, Planet of the Apes. Oh, you know, yeah, with okay, the yeah. So we, uh, we, um, we made that film together on a very low budget, and it had its world premiere at the BFI Film Festival. And then it did, it did some good uh, festival screenings and got some nice uh, reviews. So his first debut uh, feature, we're developing and writing together. What is it you think that makes Scotland particularly cinematic? I mean, is there something about the, the landscape and the people? Yeah, well, and so obviously on? it's very beautiful mm -hmm. and um, there's lots of unspoiled landscape for uh, external shots and uh, maybe period films as well, uh, castles and ruins and country houses and things. So it's great for that stuff. Um, it's a great access point to the rest of Europe. Um, the subsidies from the government. Um, uh, there's a strong community of uh, crew up here, very talented crew that I hope if foreign shoots come, they make use of. I think that there should be a law or certainly some responsibility placed on international projects coming here and they should take uh, a vast percentage of the, the crew building from the local area. Scotland's got it all happening. It's a fantastic place. It's got a rich history, you know, the birthplace of the Enlightenment, you know, and it's very liberal, you know, and uh, it's, it's, 
there's quite a lot of uh, literature yet to yeah. be explored in film even you yeah know. yeah um, very much so and um so yeah the, 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 the scottish industry has got a lot of potential i think i think it's doing well with big budget international projects like the avengers uh mary queen of scots sort of semi-international, semi-cooperative films like Outland, uh, Outlander or series like Outlander and Outlaw King, but also really low budget, completely independent, uh, thought-provoking, you know, experimental, um, alternative filmmaking is, what is, is what's missing. I think that's, you know, a lot of, you know, major film industries have that uh -huh. as, as your kind of base to build on, you know, and I think that would be a yeah, good I'd thing like to see. Yeah, I'd like to see more well. young David Lynch's, Jim Jarmusch, mm. Maya Deren, Agnes Varda, uh, you know, the next Mark Cousins, or more, more Mark Cousins, and I see, see that in the cinema more regularly, mm. you know, so. Well, we can only hope that <laughs> comes about. Well, okay, Jamie, thanks for coming along. Thanks nice again. to speak to you. Good luck with the films. Cheers, we look forward to you. seeing them. And We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.